my beautiful friends, how are you today? Thank you so much for joining me once again sa ating next dose of Bible Chismes on a weekly basis. So this is going to be our first Bible Chismes for the month of December. And I have a special treat for you. There's going to be a giveaway at the end of the video. I will give you a question na kailangan yung sagutin and then we will pick uh, the winner. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. Welcome sa ating next dose of Bible Chismes on a weekly basis. My name is Mami Lorenda of the Mummy Hacker page. I'm sorry I skipped. Hindi ko na alam kung two or three weeks yung skip ko. I'm really sorry. Um, but I had to attend a retreat and rediscover, you know, um, what the Lord really wants me to do. Um, so I had to take a step back and, um, yeah, retreat. That's why I think it's called a retreat para makapag, ano ka, makapag ka and take a look at the picture objectively. Um, we're back here and um, I'm happy to be here. Um, so last time we talked about Rizpa and her dedication to really save her son's bodies from the beasts that would, you know, spiritually take them to hell, okay? Um, for seven months, she did this, and then um, the Lord um, had mercy on all of them. So it's such a powerful story. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'm gonna link it in the description box down below, okay? Um, today, we're going to be talking about someone um, that's labeled in the Bible, in the Old Testament, as the worst king ever. Bakit siya naging worst king? We will find out in a bit. Okay? So, um, this king's name is uh, King Ahab. Okay? So, si King Ahab ay anak ni Omri. So, si King Ahab, kasi um, even the forefathers before him, the, the kings um, before him, um, they've all been very disobedient to the Lord. Um, if you've seen my previous uh, videos or Bible Chismes videos, whenever um, a, a, an Israelite or someone who belongs to the chosen people of God disobeys God, um, a lot of bad things start to happen to them. Okay? So here in this um, story, we will find out um, how King Ahab really dis disappointed and disobeyed the Lord. Okay, so let's do a little background um, on King Ahab. Okay, so King Ahab is the son of King Omri um, on the 38th year of uh, Asa, King of Judah. Alright, Judah is one of the tribes of 12 tribes of um, Israel. Um, now, he reigned in Samaria over Israel for 22 years. And then, um, he committed the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat. Now, the sins of Jeroboam, um, we will talk about that sa ating susunod na episodes. May kita natin yun sa 1 Kings chapter 12. And yung sins of Jeroboam, in summary, is um, he introduced the worship of idols. Um, of sabi dito, golden calves as objects of divine adoration. Yan. So, yung mga idolatry, yung mga images. Siya yung nag-introduce nun. He also changed the place of service from Jerusalem. I will talk about that sa ating mga susunod na episodes. We'll talk about Jeroboam. Truly, uh, grabe yung disobedience niya rin. Also appointed priests outside of Levi's tribe. If you can remember yung story natin about Moses and Korah, may mga certain priests, I mean, um, there's a certain tribe kung saan doon lang dapat manggaling yung mga magiging high priests na kung Israel. Pero itong si Jeroboam, he completely disobeyed that. And King Ahab himself committed this even further by marrying Jezebel. Um, Jezebel today um, is like an adjective na. It's an adjective that is synonymous to being that of a man-eater, that of a um, deceitful liar. Sa ang pangit kasi ng connotation when someone calls you is on Jezebel. You're a Jezebel. Diba? Because of this incident that's happened in history. So, ano bang nangyari talaga? Okay. So, si Jezebel ay anak ni F. Baal, um, who was the chief uh, or parang king of the Phoenicians. Okay? Now, these Phoenicians, 
they are um, known for worshipping nature gods um, and Baal is one of those nature gods okay um, and some of the rituals performed to please Baal is child sacrifice and hindi lang basta child sacrifice it has to be like the firstborn male in the family that you have to burn the child like you have to sacrifice it by fire okay which is really against the law of um, God because bawal pumatay ng tao so isang um, way to or one of the rituals to please Baal is sexual immorality and that's definitely you know, against the law of God. So, si Jezebel, hindi lang siya basta-basta follower ni Baal. Isa siyang zealous follower ni Baal. Um, and when we say zealous, as in, talagang, if I believe in Baal, I will do everything that I can para ikaw rin at yung lahat ng sasakupan ko kay Baal sasamba. Ganun siya ka zealous. You know, if Jezebel um, were only known or if, if she only knew God and believed in God instead, I'm pretty sure she would have been a really good preacher um, ng Lord. However, in this case, um, it's very unfortunate because um, kay Baal siya talagang naniniwala. Hindi lang yung pag-commit ng um, pag-worship sa idols ang ginawa ni King Ahab. He actually magnified it by marrying an ultimate non-believer which is Jezebel and then yung union nila um, was actually reason kung bakit nagkaroon ng famine doon sa Israel when they got married itong si Jezebel and si, si King Ahab they really widely itong si King Ahab ano siya eh? um, he's an Israelite okay and he's the king of Israel um, and he's supposed to tell the people that, hey, you have to follow God, you have to believe in Him, have faith in Him, and pray to Him only. Diba? Kasi yun yung sabi ni Lord. Sa kanya lang dapat um, sasamba. However, hindi sinunod yun ni Ahab. Along with, of course, his ancestors. But he instead followed Jezebel. You know, Jezebel here um, is... She's a beautiful woman, but she's also very sleek. She's very deceitful, okay? And um, it's like she's a dominant kind of queen, um, for that matter. King Ahab, he's a strong king, and he conquered a lot um, of kingdoms, okay? Kasi nga, nung panahon ni King Ahab, talagang lumakas ng husto yung army ng Israel. Um, marami silang mga na, na overcome, na... Uh, the kingdoms, the tribes. And for him to be so mesmerized by Jezebel, then that means Jezebel really is something. She's like a dominant kind of person, you know, kind of woman. Um, that whatever Jezebel says, susundin yun ni Ahab. When they got married, um, sabi ni Jezebel, hey, kailangan lahat ng mga tao natin sasamba kay Baal, kay Baal. So, that that happen and um, for some you know for some time um, hinayaan to ni Lord na mangyari kaya talaga sila nagkakaroon ng faith kay Lord because they are being scared by Jezebel na if you do not follow Baal um, something bad is going to happen to you so pinadala ngayon ni Lord um, inutusan ngayon ni Lord si uh, Prophet Elijah na pumunta kay Ahab and Jezebel to deliver a message and the message says na um, there's going to be a great famine in the whole of Israel because of what you are doing. So, itong si Ahab at si Jezebel, bala ko dyan. Wapak hells. Kasi naniniwala sila kay Baal and they don't believe that the God of Abraham um, can, you know, fulfill this prophecy. Until, nagkaroon talaga ng famine. As in, totally great famine. Okay, walang, walang tubig, walang pagkain. Um, there's really scarcity of um, the things, essential things, na kailangan ng mga tao. And despite that, you know, um, people still continued to worship Baal. Kasi akala nila, si Baal talaga yung makapagbigay sa kanila ng um, mga kailangan nila. Which is really, really wrong. It's really false. So, um, 
what happened next was um na realize nito si Jezebel na nagkatotoo yung sinabi ni Prophet Elijah. So sabi ni Jezebel, okay. Um I want you all to call all the prophets of God and um patayin natin sila. Let's lay them all. Because hindi nila mahalap, mahanap si Prophet Elijah. By the way, um, after Elijah told um, Jezebel and Ahab about the prophecy of the famine, sabi ni Lord, o sige, umalis ka na dyan, and then um, pumunta ka muna dito sa lugar na to. Um, and then, you know, during that period, wala, kasi, wala, wala talagang pagkain si Elijah, but um, God provided for him sa pamamagitan ng mga Ravens. So, uh, sabi dito sa chapter 17. Leave here. Uh, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Leave here, turn eastward, and hide in the Kerith Ravine, east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have ordered the ravens to feed you there. Diba? So, it's so amazing. And in that way, walang makakalam kung nasan talaga si Elijah. And just see how God will, you know, protect you from anyone who will do you harm. Kasi nga, sabi ni Jezebel, kailangan um, patayin yung mga prophets eh. And then you know, Obadiah. Um, si Obadiah yung parang butler doon sa um, palace ni King Ahab. Okay, and Obadiah is a believer of God. Um, and then when he heard about this, um, na may quest sila to find Elijah. Kasi nga, di ba, kailangan isaman yung mga prophets um, of God eh. I think, uh, basta marami sila, marami sila nun. And then, itong si Obadiah, ang ginawa niya, um, 50 by 50, mer uh, tinago niya yung mga prophets sa isang cave and they fed, they, uh, sabi dun sa verse, um, he fed them with bread and water. So, about a hundred prophets yung naitago ni Obadiah. Okay? And then, there came a time um, when itong si Elijah um, sabi ni Lord, sige, balik ka na. Balik ka na muna doon sa city. There's a woman there, isang balo, a widow woman. I've asked her to take care of you. Ngayon, um, yung famine, sobrang grabe na. To the point that, itong na, nung nakita na niya yung um, widower with her son, um, as in last last piece of ano nila yun, parang yun, yun yung pinakahuling ingredient nila to bake bread last um, portion of their drink na yung ano for the day and then after that um wala na magaantay na lang silang mamatay sila so ganun ka scarce ganun ka sobra yung famine in the land now um Elijah met this woman and then sabi ni Elijah oh sige um ibigay mo na lang sa akin yung ibebake mo na bread um and then the lord the Lord will provide for you. So, itong si widower, kasi kinuusap na rin siya ni Lord, nag nag manifest sa kanya ang Panginoon. So, she followed. And she baked the bread for Elijah. And yung last drink, binigay niya kay Elijah. Alam niyo, if, if you think about it, parang in this modern time, will you do that? Gagawin mo ba yun? Last piece na ng pagkain mo yun, ibibigay mo pa sa someone na you do not even know. And hindi mo alam kung tuto pa rin niya yung sinasabi niya sa'yo na, sige, kasi um, the Lord will provide for you eh. I mean, really, um, that kind of faith from the widow is wow. It's really wow. So anyway, um, so the widow baked the bread and provided for Elijah. And then alam niyo ba yung mangyari? <laughs> Grabe lang. Kasi um, yung lalagyan nila ng flour, talagang Meron ulit laman na flour. And then, hindi na siya nauubusan ng laman. Pati yung lalagyan nila ng oil, which is used to also bake the bread. Kasi ba yung bread kasi dati, ano lang eh. Um, it's just a mixture of water and the dough. And then, parang lalagyan mo lang ng konting oil para, um, para may konting lasa siya. So, ganun lang kasimple yung mga breads dati. And then, yung lalagyan nila ng oil, it does not run out of oil as well. Which is so amazing. They were blessed. And hindi na sila nagutom, ever. And you, may tubig rin silang may inom na malina. So, truly, God provided for them. Diba? It's, it's so amazing. Um, and then there came a time na um, despite all these blessings, yung anak 
na lalaki nung widower na matay. I think, siguro bumigay na rin yung katawan niya because of malnutrition. Kasi nga, diba, sobrang tagal na. For three years, nagkaroon ng famine doon sa Israel. Um, so, namatay yung anak. And then, itong widow, sabi niya, nagalit siya ngayon kay Elijah. Kasi, sabi, sinisi niya yung sarili niya. And also, sinisi niya si Elijah. Kasi sabi niya, ginawa ko naman yung gusto ni Lord, ah, na, um, paalagaan ka, pakainin ka, tanggapin ka dito sa bahay. Pero bakit ganyan yung nangyari sa anak ko? Namatay pa rin yung anak ko. So, ang ginawa ni Elijah, kinuha niya yung bata, um, dinala doon sa loob ng kanyang room, and he prayed to God. Sabi niya, Lord, um, please um, bring the soul of this boy back to his body. Kasi, di ba, um, ginawa naman namin yung gusto mo, ginawa rin yung widower yung gusto mo, um, would you please um, bring this boy back to life? And that happened. I mean, he really prayed. Kasi medyo parang, na-realize na siguro ni Elijah, napapahiya ako dito, Lord. Ano ba yan? Napapahiya ako. Please bring the boy back to life. And the boy really lived. The boy lived again. Diba? Um, God gave the soul back to the boy. And nagulat. At syempre, natuwa yung widower. And dito lang na sabi ng widower na, yes, you are truly a prophet of God. I mean, hindi wawasapat sa'yo yung overflowing, hindi na uubos yung laman ng lalagyan mo ng arena, tsaka lalagyan mo ng oil, di ba? But I think, you know, um, for some of us, ganun rin tayo eh. Kahit na may mga mga gandang nangyayari na sa atin, we still want for more. We still want to ask for more. Ayun sa mga kakulangan natin. And that's why we need God in our lives. No, medyo umokay-okay na si Elijah. Medyo namakas na siya kasi nasa city na siya ulit. Um, with the widower. Um, nagpakita ngayon itong si Elijah kay Obadiah. Because that was the time when um, King Ahab asked them na hanapin yung si um, Elijah sa city. So, um, they did. Okay? And then, they split up. Nag-split up si King Ahab and then si Obadiah para daw marami, malaki yung makakover nila. So, si, si, um, si Elijah, he showed himself to Obadiah, the butler. Um, and sabi ni Elijah, Hey, Obadiah, sabihin mo sa boss mo, sa master mo, that I am here. Ngayon itong si Obadiah, sobrang takot na takot na siya kay Ahab. Kasi marami nang pinapatay si Ahab. Kakahanap niya, kakahanap niya kay Elijah. Hindi niya makita-kita si Elijah. Whoever tells him na hindi nila alam kung nasaan si Elijah, that's ka kaagad. As in, ganun siya kalupit. And ganun siya ka-desperate, you know, dati. Um, in looking for Elijah. As in, super. Diba? <laughs> wow. Sobrang galit. And the galit is always, yung galit na yon. Lagi yung ginagatungan ni Jezebel. Si Jezebel yung nag-create ng ganong galit sa puso ni Ahab eh. Di ba? So, kasi nga, wala si Ahab. Wala si Ahab kay God. Um, yung judgment niya, super clouded na with, with anger. So, he can't really think straight. Anyway, so eto na. Sabi ni um, Elijah, kay um, kay Obadiah. Sige na, um, sabihan mo sa master, sabihin mo sa master mo na I'm here. Obadiah said, Bakit? Bakit ako? Ayoko. Baka mamaya, ano eh, sabihin niya, papatayin ako kasi kailan lang, sabi ko sa kanya, hindi ko alam kung nasan ka. Tapos ngayon, sasabihin ko, andyan ka na. Baka mamaya mamatay ako. So, nakipagtalo ngayon si Obadiah kay Elijah. Sabi ni Elijah, no, um, just tell him that I'm here. Um, I will say, hindi kita tatakasan. Um, dito lang ako. Magpapakita talaga ako kay, um, kay Ahab. So, okay, na-convince si Obadiah. And Obadiah told um, Ahab na nandito na si Elijah. And Elijah and Ahab, uh, Elijah and Ahab met. And so, syempre, upon meeting, galit na galit, G na G itong si Ahab. Sabi niyo, hoy, ikaw ang dahilan kung bakit may famine dito. Okay. Ikaw ang may kasalanan nito. Sabi ni Elijah, it's not my fault. And how can I create this famine? God created this famine because ikaw and your ancestors disobeyed God. 
sabi niya ganun kay Ala, kay Am, um, kay Ahab. Um, and then, dumating sa point na the, they argued, and then Elijah said, sige, ganito na lang. Magkaroon, magkaroon na lang tayo ng showdown. Okay? Um, if you so believe in Baal, in, in Baal, as the God who is really powerful, then sige, magkita tayo sa Mount Carmel, dalhin mo yung buong Israel doon, yung Israel community, dalhin mo doon sa Mount Carmel, together with your 450 um, prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah. Okay? Itong si Asherah, by the way, um, siya yung sinasabi noon na wife ni God. Um, if if you, you can look it up sa Google, Asherah was known um, before as the wife of God. Okay. And um, itong si Ahab, gumawa siya, or naglagay actually siya ng statue ni Asherah doon sa kanilang palace, which angered God even more, um, you know, back then. So, just, just um, a side note. So, anyway, yun yung sinabi ni Elijah. Sige, makita kita tayo lahat doon sa Mount Carmel. And then, let's see kung sinong God ang totoong makapangyarihan sa lahat. So, they did. And kinabukasan, nagpunta yung buong Israelites community doon sa Mount Carmel together with the total of 850 prophets ni Jezebel. Um, 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah. So, ayun na, andun na silang lahat. Okay, so sabi ni Elijah, okay, sige, ganito gawin natin. Um, kung sino sa inyo, or kung sino yung may pinakamakapangyarihan na Diyos, um, mag-alay tayo ng um, mga cows uh, or bull. Mag-alay tayo ng animal for the Lord, for our God, and um, hindi natin sisindihan. Hahayaan natin ang just natin yung magsisindi ng apoy so that our offerings will be burnt and offered. So, okay. Umukay sila ngayon. Sige, sige, yun lang pala eh. Kasi mata talagang sobrang um, tatag ng kanilang faith sa kanilang Diyos na si Baal. And si Elijah, he's just, nag-iisa lang siya dun. Pero imagine the boldness that he has, the bravery that he has to face all those 850 people and he challenged them with this. Um, and that's because he is really, really um, faithful and he trusted that God will really deliver him and that will God will um, be true to his word. So, eto na yung nangyari. Um, sabi ni Elijah, sige, gawa kayo ng altar and then maglay kayo ng dalawang animals dyan and then um, huwag niyong sisindihan. So, sabi ni Elijah, sige, mauna na kayo. So, pinauna niya ngayon yung mga um, prophets ni Ahab. Um, sabi niya, oh, sige, mag-pray na kayo. Tapos, nag-pray sila for hours and hours. Walang mangyari. Nakasan nyo pa, sabi ni Elijah. Nakasal pa si Elijah, sabi niya. Nakasan nyo pa, baka mamaya busy yung ano, yung Diyos ninyo. Baka hindi kinarinig. Baka nag pa siya sa ibang prayers ng ibang tao. Nakasan nyo para marinig kayo. Wala pa rin talagang nangyari. Hanggang sa naging desperate na sila, alam nyo, they, they cut themselves. They bled themselves out. Naglulupasay sila. Di sinugaran na lang sa rin nila. Pinadugo nila. Tapos, I think, winasik-winasik-winasik-wisik nila yung blood nila doon sa altar. And, naglulupasay sila doon. Wala pa rin nangyari. Tinawag niya ngayon yung attention ng ibang mga Israelites community na nandoon, yung mga spectators. Sabi niya, um, okay, so can you please um, mag-dig kayo around the altar? Yung parang kanal sa palibot ng altar. So, yan. Okay, nasa sila. Tapos, Sabi niya, sige, pakibuhusan ng tubig. Nang maraming maraming tubig. Binuhusan nilang tubig. Sige, parang kulang pa yan. Dagdagan nyo pa. Hanggang dinagdagan pa nilang dinagdagan. Sige, dagdagan nyo pa. Sabi ni Elijah, dagdagan nyo pa. Ang dami-dami ng tubig. O pati yung, yung animal, basa inyo na rin. Buhusan nyo ng buhusan. Pati yung mga kahoy, buhusan nyo ng buhusan. So, basang-basa na ngayon yung altar. Tapos, punong-puno pa ng tubig. There's a puddle of water surrounding the altar. Alam niyo yun, you know, if, if you want to start a fire, you want um, the kahoy and everything to be as dry as possible. Para mabilis siyang aapoy. Tama? Kasi Elijah, 
pinabasa niya ng pinabasa ng husto yung kanyang altar. So, napakamot yung ulo, nung inang ulo yung mga tao. Sabi nila, why? Okay. And so, alam nyo, um, Elijah prayed to God. And then, after he prayed, in just a snap like that, ay, wait lang, bago pala nangyari yun, sabi ni Elijah, sige, atras na kayo, atras kayo. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> Paninig niya sinabi yan. Or sabi niya, sige, atras kayo, atras kayo. So, minaatras niya yung mga tao. And then, sabi niya, um, he prayed to God. He prayed to God. Na, Lord, okay, um, Father of heaven and earth, um, I offer you this offering and I pray that you um, ma na maglabas ka ng fire from heaven to burn this offering in front of all these people. And then, pagkatapos niya magsalita, boom! Biglang, boom! <laughs> There's a big chunk of fire that struck from heaven and then it burned everything in it nawala yung tubig nag evaporate agad yung tubig um, yung calf uh, yung yung animal it burned instantly even the even the altar as in talagang nag burn lahat so nagulat ngayon yung mga tao <gasps> wow that's amazing that's really amazing so we were all in all and Ahab felt so much defeat that talagang luhaan, as in talagang down na down yung spirit niya, yung mga panahon yun. So, okay. Sabi nila, sige, tara na, uwi na. Um, napatunayan na natin na si Lord, um, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is more powerful than Baal. And so, the Israelites started um, worshiping God again. Okay, so that's what happened. So, don't be scared. It's still me. So anyway, let's continue on. So from the Mount Carmel, um, oh, diba? uh, Elijah was able to pray to God and he was able to show that God really is powerful. Kasi, um, after niya mag, uh, mag pray, talagang just after after saying the last words of his prayer, biglang lumabas na yung sobrang laking fire and nasunog nga yung um, in-offer niya compared to what the prophets of Baal and um, Asherah did. Na kung ano-ano ginagawa nila, naglulupasay sila, nag they even cut themselves. But nothing happened for hours and hours and hours. So, you know, after that, um, the people were able to believe that, hey, God really is indeed very, very powerful. Um, and so, what happened next was, um, Elijah asked for um, the prophets, the 850 prophets in total, um, to be killed by sword. Okay? Because, nagpakalat sila ng ano eh, ng um, maling information, maling truth about a god about god um, and they've been worshiping baal who is not even a true god but there's one living god and that is the god of abraham isaac and jacob and so the 850 prophets died and you know after that sabi ni elijah kay king ahab um, king ahab I, I need you to look um over there dun sa may um part ng sea and um check if there is something if if marino formation on clouds because it for years there's never been any rain for three years as in there's drought well rain nothing at all not even a speck of cloud so um in to sunny king ahab yung kanyang mga tauhan sige check nyo what wala silang nakita for the second time elijah said again wala third time wala fourth time wala fifth time wala Sixth time, wala pa rin. Seventh time, sabi ng isa sa mga tauhan niya, Yeah, I see a, a, a cloud forming. It's like a small hand. Imagine that. A cloud forming like a small hand. Hindi ka ba naman kilabutan nun, di ba? Mak makakita ka nga lang ng 
um, cloud formation na parang bunny, na parang mga circle-circle na perfect. Parang, what? It's amazing! But, you know, for that, they ha they haven't seen um, that formation, um, that not even a speck of cloud, and they saw um, a, a cloud in the form of a hand, and they were truly amazed. And they're like, yes, yes, there is a cloud. May cloud na. Nagperform siya, and it's, it, it looks like a small hand. And you know, it's it's a really far um, point point of view. So if if you you know try to come to think of it, that would have been a really really it's an enormous piece of cloud, na parang kamay, di ba? So that's just amazing. It's wow. There's still that wow factor. Um, every time I read these kind of stories, sa Bible talaga. Anyway. So, sabi niya ni, um, ni Elijah, Okay, um, King, um, kailangan na natin magbandaling bumaba from the mountain because baka agutan tayo ng sobrang lakas na ulan dito at bahain tayo at hindi na tayo maka -uwi. We might get stranded. We might die here because of the flood. So, dali-dali sila ngayon bumaba habang wala pang ulan. Okay? Um, talagang pinapaspas ni, ano, ni King Ahab lahat ng mga chariots niya para mabilis silang makababa from the mountain. Itong si Elijah, wala naman siyang sasakyan. Wala siyang kahit na anong chariot. Wala siyang horse. Okay? Um, but you know what he, he did? <laughs> okay, so he started walking. And then, later on, he started running. And then, sprinting. And then, like, really, really sprinting. Alam niyo yung Sonic? Yung pag tumatakbo si Sonic, parang umiikot-ikot na yan yan. Ganun kabilis tumakbo si Elijah bigla. Hanggang sa naunahan niya yung mga naunahan niya yung mga chariots ni King Ahab. <laughs> Di ba? <clears throat> Iisip yan. Imagine yun. Sobrang nagmamadali sila. And of course, um, pinoprotektahan, pinoprotektahan ni um, ni Lord si Elijah. So you know, Elijah was an old man. And he started running like that. Naunahan niya pa yung mga chariots. Alam niyo ba, ang, ang chariots natin, dalawang horse or apat na horse um, ang naghihila doon. And then, maunahan mo kabayo, tumatakbo ka lang, maunahan mo kabayo. Diba? Superhuman. It's such supernatural kind of power that only God can give. Diba? Ang <laughs> isi mo nakakatawa, but it's really amazing. <laughs> naunahan niya. Amazed na amazed ngayon si King Ahab. Gosh, no niya yung mga kabayo. So, they were able to reach home. And itong si Jezebel, um, she welcomed King Ahab with a smile on her face. Sabi niya, oh, kumusta? Ano nangyari? Um, did you nail him? Uh, tingnan mo, umuulan na. Uh, tinupad na ni Baal yung, ano, yung mga panalangin natin. Sabi ni King Ahab, no, hindi si Baal ang may gawa niyan. Yung, yung Diyos ni Elijah ang may gawa niyan. Tapos, sabi ni Jezebel, huh? nasa na yung mga prophets ko? Tara na, mag-feast na tayo. Sabi ni Ahab, I, I had them killed because they were all liars and deceivers. Kasi hindi totoo na Diyos si Baal. Mas makapangyarihan pa rin yung Diyos ni Elijah. You know, upon hearing this, yung galit ni Jezebel, walang mapaglagyan. As in, she's really, really angry. She was really enraged. And you know, Elijah was just around the palace. And he was able to hear kung ano yung galit ni Jezebel. And so, sabi ni Jezebel, as long as I am alive, I am not, um, I will make sure that Elijah will suffer. Parang, will suffer as I have suffered. Parang ganun. So it was a really, you know, grave threat. And talagang na natakot ng husto si Elijah. So natakot talaga ng husto si Elijah dun sa sinabi niyo ni Jezebel. So, sabi niya, naku, kailangan ko nang tumakas. You know, for that moment, um, I think it's because sobrang lakas kasi ng personality ni Jezebel na talagang na, na, ano, na move si Elijah. Um, despite everything that's happened, despite everything, na miracles na, na perform ni Elijah, 
um, na binigay ng Lord sa kanya as power, um, natahot pa rin siya. So, eto nga yung si um, Elijah. Sobrang natakot siya doon sa sinabi ni Jezebel. Because, as in really, um, ganun ka sobrang yung sobrang lakas ng personality ni Jezebel that by her mere words na ipapapatay siya um, sobra talagang nang yung mga kalamnan ni Prophet Elijah so he fled Elijah fled to Horeb For the first week of our um, weekly Christmas giveaway is who is who is the wife of King Ahab yeah I had to split this in two parts because it's very long really and I think um, mas mabibigyan siya ng justice if it's you know split in two parts so anyway I want to thank you all so much for joining me um, for our Bible Chismes and I'll see you again next time sa ating next dose of Bible Chismes on a weekly basis. Choose to be kind, choose to love, and always remember, God loves you so very much. Bye!